While you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ Bless. This is Officer Simakaya with IUIC Chicago. Shalom, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ Bless. This is Officer Judah with IUIC Chicago. So we're going to get right into it. We're going to do a go over a class entitled A Fine Line Between Love and Hate. We're going to get right into it. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4. Because as we come into this truth, a lot of our ways, a lot of the things that we learned growing up, how to, how do we dealt with each other, how we dealt, dealt amongst each other, we got to throw all that stuff in the garbage. Point blank, period. That's how we got to do. We got to throw it in the garbage on how we deal with one another. We got to deal with one another sincerely and uprightly and righteously. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth, envieth not. Uh, jump up to verse 1. Verse 1. Just so we can get the full thought. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Uh -huh. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. So basically what the, what the scripture is telling us is that you can be the most eloquent speaker. You can, know, you can know all the precepts, but if you don't have charity combined with those things, it means nothing. You might as well don't know anything. Because charity is what really helps us build a nation. Like the scriptures say in uh, Matthew 22, when, when Christ was asked, what's the greatest commandment? His answer was to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, your heart, your mind, and soul, and strength. I'm, I think I'm butchering that a little bit. <laughs> I added the strength part. But, and then he said, the second is like unto it, that, that, that you love your neighbor as yourself. So that's what charity is. Uh, read on. Verse 3, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. So if you do all these things, but you don't have charity, which is love, it means nothing. You can give, you can give all these things to the goodwill and the, uh, what is the salvation army. You could do all those things, but if you don't, if you're not applying these commandments, you're not going, don't, if you're not in line with what the scriptures say, with what God commands us to do, it means nothing. Read the next verse. Verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up. So what we're going to go through today is some of the qualities of that charity. And then we're also going to see what charity is. So charity, pull up that definition, that first definition for charity. It's the the, uh, it's a screenshot, the screenshot that says agape, yup, that's it. So this first um, definition is from the Blue Letter Bible. It's from the Blue Letter Bible. Let's just give some words, just give us a little clear, and we can also go to, uh, through a couple of scriptures to show that charity is love. You ain't got to read the top part. Just read the bottom where it say outline, outline of biblical usage. Uh, charity, outline of biblical usage. Affection, goodwill, love, benevolence, brotherly love. So those are words. When you, when you read charity, this is what it is. When you say, when in the truth, when we say, um, when we use the word love, we know that it's talking about the commandments. But the way we show the way we show our affection to the most high is by keeping his commandments. The way we show our affection towards the nation, towards our brother, is by what we do. It's not just some words, oh I love you. It's not no ooey gooey feeling. It's action. <clears throat> it's an action that we um it's something that we do. So real quick, so it says charity suffereth long. We see that charity is love. Go to 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 8. So we're going to get a little bit of understanding on what charity is and, and, the, and the, some of the qualities of charity. Read that. 1 
First Peter chapter four and verse eight. And above all things, have fervent charity. So it says above all things. If we are in this truth. We changing our mind. We doing what God requires us to do. It says above all things, just like we read in first Corinthians uh, 13 verse one through three. It says you could do all these things, all these acts, all this giving money and speak eloquently and no precepts, no prophecies. But if you don't have charity, it means nothing. Meaning you're not sincere. You're not keeping the commandments. Read that again in first, uh, first Peter four and eight at the, from the top. And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves. Above all things have fervent charity among yourselves. Meaning you got to be on fire and building up your brotherhood. If your brother, if you, if you, if an offense come up, you got to have fire in you to be like, you know what? I got to go to my brother and resolve this. I can't be at peace if my brother is at odds with me. Read. For charity <clears throat> shall cover the multitude of sins. So it says charity shall cover the multitude of sins. That's going into having mercy. That's going into being forgiving your brother. Applying the commandments when, when situations arise, when conflict arise, you apply the scriptures. Charity covereth a multitude of transgression. Go to Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12. So now we're going to read in Proverbs. It's going to say the same thing, but it's going to use a different word. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12. Read it when you got it. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12. <clears throat> hatred stirreth up strife. So hatred stirs up strife. Hatred causes confusion. Hatred causes divisions, contention. That's what hatred does. Hatred, somebody... And just a, as a light example, somebody step on your shoe. Hatred is going, hey, man, why you step on my shoe? You ain't see my foot right there? That's what hatred does. Causes a scene. Gets out the spirit. Read. But love covereth all sins. It says, but love covereth all sins. So we just reading the same thing that we just read in First Peter, but this time it's using love. So that lets you know that, that charity is referring to love. It's the same thing. Uh, go to James chapter 5 and verse 19. So now we're going to deal with where it says charity covereth a multitude of sins. When it says that, it ain't talking about you sweep, you sweep some, somebody do commit some sin and you sweep it under the rug and don't deal with it. That's not what that scripture is saying. It's not, it's saying, it's not saying you, throw a, um, you throw a blanket over the sin somebody doing. No, it's going into you actually applying the commandment, applying Leviticus 19 and 17, Applying um, debate thy cause with thy neighbor. Applying Matthew 18. You are addressing the sin that you that your brother may be in the midst of. And when he repent, you actually, that's you covering their sin. That's mercy. Because you're correcting them. You give, you correcting them because you've seen it. You're giving them that opportunity to repent. And when they repent, that's you covering, that's that love covering a multitude of sin. Uh, read that what you got. James 5 and 19. 19. James chapter 5 and verse 19. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth. So it says, notice it says, if any of you do err from the truth. We know that the truth is the laws. When you look at Psalms 119 and 142, the truth is God's law. So it says, if anyone errs from the truth or anyone errs from the laws of God, read. And one or, com or commits a sin, read. And one convert him. Let him know. That he which covereth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. Now read that again, that last part. It says, read it again. Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. Uh huh. And shall hide a multitude of sins. So notice now here it's saying shall hide a multitude of sins. In the other two scriptures we read it says charity covereth sin. That's the same thing. Because then in this case... A brother erred from the truth. He sinned. He was corrected. He repented. And he saved the soul from death. And that hide, that's that hide a multitude of sins. You want to bring something up? Uh, it, says, and it says, and shall hide of multitude of sins. So that let us know that charity, that charity covereth the multitude of sins, that love that covereth the multitude of sins is actually us applying the commandments. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4. Read, it, read just that first part. Go ahead, read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4. Charity suffereth long. So it says charity suffereth long or love suffereth long. Or when you're in these commandments, you're applying God's commandments, you are long-suffering. You have a long-suffering spirit, meaning you are patient. 
You're not quick to jump out the spirit. Uh, pull that definition up. This is, this is another definition from the Blue Letter Bible. It don't have a word on there, but this is from the word long suffering or suffereth long. Uh, just read that bottom part. Outline of biblical usage. One, to be of a long spirit, not to lose heart. So it also goes into us. When you have, when you were in the commandments, you sincerely keeping the commandments, it also goes into you being able to endure in this truth. You, in, you have endurance. If you fall, you're going to get back up and keep it pushing. It also goes in that. But when you're dealing with your brother, you long suffering. You understand that, hey, we all getting ourselves together. We all got issues. So there's gonna be some um there's gonna be some bumping of the heads, but you don't you don't throw in the towel on a brother or sister because y'all bump heads. No, you correct it, you fix it, and then you keep building. Uh read the next one. A to persevere patiently and bravely in enduring misfortunes and troubles. Uh -huh. B to be patient in bearing the offenses and injuries of others. So just real quick, just a, a, an example. How many ever went into a bank? And it's 10 people in the line at the bank. And then you see you, you standing in line. The bank only got one line open. Or you're in a grocery store. And it's only one line open. But the line right at Walmart. We use Walmart for an example. You go in Walmart at 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. And they got one line open. And you got 10 employees standing around not doing nothing. That's going to be a test if you got a persevering spirit. Are you going to stand there and be like, come on, man, what you do? Why you over there? Are you going to get out the spirit? You're going to be up there huffing and puffing, folding your arms. If you're doing all that, that shows, even though that's not you dealing with those that's keeping the commandments, that's a sign that you ain't got a long-suffering spirit. You lack patience. You're supposed to be able, when it says, it says to persevere patiently and, and bravely in enduring misfortunes and troubles. We're using the example about you waiting in line at the store, but if you can't persevere patiently, to persevere patiently, you're looking at it like, okay, yeah, them employees standing around, but maybe they got something else that they, maybe that's, that not, they, that's not their job. You think you, your thought process don't go to, come on, man, I'm trying to get up out of here. Come on, da, 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 da. you complaining. You actually stand there and you just wait until the line go down and you get, and you get your turn. You don't get out the spirit, so to say. And it's the same thing with applying with dealing with your brothers. Dealing with your sisters, dealing with the body, dealing in this truth, dealing with yourself. You have a long suffering spirit. Uh, read on. I, to be mild and slow in avenging. It says to be mild and slow in, in avenging. Mild and slow in avenging, meaning you can take some blows. You can take some blows without automatically trying to get, retaliate and get back at somebody. Read. To be long-suffering, slow to anger, slow to punish. So those, the, it, when you long, when you long-suffering, I mean, the word itself, it, it, it explains itself. It says long-suffering, meaning you can suffer long without getting out of body, so to say. Uh, go to Matthew chapter 18 and verse 21, dealing with, dealing with our brothers, dealing with your sisters. A long-suffering spirit is not going to be quick to haul off and punch somebody in the mouth. A long-suffering spirit, and that's why, like, we in Chicago. We already, it ain't no secret what goes on in Chicago. Chicago, brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters get murdered, and that, for that very reason, because people don't got no patience. They emotional. You're quick to get in your emotions and react and don't even think and process what's going on. Read. Matthew, <clears throat> chapter 18, verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my, shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? So he been asking Christ. He asked, so Peter came and asked Christ, how many times should my brother offend me, do me wrong, and I forgive him? Should, I, should, should it just be seven times? Read. Let's see what Christ told him. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times but until 70 times 7. He said not 7 times, but 70 times 7. That's, what, 490? So that's 490 times. Your brother sinned against you, and he come, hey, man, you know what? I was out the spirit. I apologize. You got to forgive him. That's having a long-suffering spirit. 
Because many times we'll write somebody off. They do something once, twice. Oh, I ain't messing with them no more. Man, whatever, man. I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. You, you going to do it again? Are you, are you sure you, 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 you apologizing for real? You really mean that? That's how we'll be. But Christ said, no, we're not supposed to be that. Your brother, your brother sinned against you. He come and apologize. It's like it never happened. That's a long-suffering spirit because that, take, that takes some long-suffering. Your brother constantly doing something to you, constantly doing something to you. It takes it takes charity because if it's not your it's not your um, responsibility to be like, man, I don't think he's sincere. He coming and coming to apologize, but he ain't gonna do it again. That's not your. That's not that's between him and the Most High. For you applying the commandments, you having a long suffering spirit, you forgive him. He come and apologize, you forgive him. Something happened, you go and tell him like, hey, bro, I noticed you did. You you took my pen. You took you took this dollar off my table. Whatever the case may be. He come, he apologized. You're supposed to forgive him and keep it pushing. Uh, read on, was that it? Yeah, yeah that's it on 22. that. Yeah, Romans chapter 12 and verse 19. I feel like, am I going too fast? I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm rushing. Romans chapter 12 and verse 19. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. So it takes long suffering to not avenge yourselves. A lot of times we get in the motion, we get in the state of mind that somebody do something. We don't know how to, like one of the scriptures say, wink at ignorance. A lot of times we get, we so touchy and filly because we came out of the, we came out of the world. A lot of the men been raised by, they, by, they, uh, by a single parent uh, woman, a single, a single parent mother. Am I saying that right? It sounds crazy. A single mother. A lot of a lot of us been raised by a single mother. And this goes for the brothers as as well as the sisters. Because a lot of our women, sadly, a lot of our black women are overly emotional. Things happen, you see them dri driving across the street. We like to call them a, a mad black woman. They driving, they cursing people out while they driving, driving like a speed demon. Driving like 80, 90 miles and 30 mile hour and then get mad at you when you driving the speed limit or you not driving as fast. But those that's that's a that's that um avenging spirit, avenge not yourselves. Where you just something happened and you just immediately you wanna curse somebody out. Immediately you wanna get somebody, you wanna uh tell somebody about themselves in the wrong way. That's you avenging yourself. The, the scriptures say but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. If somebody do something to you and they don't get and they don't correct it, or they don't correct their spirit so they don't continue doing it, that's between them and the most high, not you and them. If you address it, or you, you, you wipe your hands of it. It's not for you to go and nah, I'm gonna make sure they know. I'm gonna make sure they know that they what they did to me. I'm gonna make them feel it. Yeah, I know he apologized, but Hey, he going to feel this. That's the avenging spirit. That's not long-suffering. That's not us actually being long-suffering towards our brothers and sisters. If we're not, if we not doing what it was, um, we not, we don't have, we, we're not supposed to have that mindset that we always got to get back at somebody or retaliate because they did something to us. No, that's not our place. Forgive. For sometimes, um, I can't think of the, 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 the saying, but sometimes you got to, somebody do something to you, <clears throat> sometimes you got to forgive them before they even come and ask you and, and repent. Sometimes you got to have that mindset because a lot of times our people, a lot of times we do stuff and don't even realize we're doing it. Not saying that, you know, you go around and don't say nothing to nobody because then they are never corrected because they are never understand that they're doing wrong. But sometimes we take things too, per we take things personal that shouldn't be taken personal. Uh, but moving on, go to read that verse again. First Peter, First Corinthians thirteen and verse four. <clears throat> read up to kind. First Corinthians chapter thirteen and verse four. Charity suffereth long and is kind. So now we see it says charity is kind. Charity has a kind spirit. Uh, pull up that definition for kind, because we gotta when we're reading the scriptures, we gotta look these words up. Because a lot of times we can look at these words and we can, we can make assumptions to what it's saying. 
But you gotta look at you gotta look these words up. And a lot of times, don't just look at one definition because some definitions you might look at, and this is I I hate it personally. I hate when I, I look up the word kind and it says to be kind to somebody. You gotta look at different sources. You gotta look deep until you fully get a clear understanding of what the word is saying. Uh, but read that. Kind, adjective, friendly, deliberately doing good to others. Middle English, kind from Old English. Natural, native, innate. Originally with the feeling of relatives for each other. From Proto-Germanic, Kudai, natural, na natural native from Kunjam family, Sikin. With collective or generalizing prefix, G-A. An abstract suffix, I-Z. The word rarely appeared in Old English without the prefix, but Read old. That. Just jump up to that last, uh, that last sentence where it says since development. Since development probably is from uh, with natural feelings to well disposed. Benign, compassionate, loving, full of tenderness. So that kind of, so charity is kind. That's somebody that that's naturally has a, a, a spirit in them to help. They just always want to help. And, it's, and, they, and they help is not grudgingly, where they help you, and then tomorrow something happened to them because they helped you, they're expecting you to help them. No, nah, that's not a kind spirit. That means you're doing something so that you can get help. You're giving alms so that you can get alms or you can get some help. That's not a kind spirit. That's a, a, a spirit that moves on. That's an opportunist spirit. You do, you're only doing something so you can get something in return. A, kind, a sincerely kind brother or sister, they're going to do things whether or not they're going to get some return from it. And that's the spirit. That's what we got to work on. That's what we got to build ourselves up to because we all came out. We came out of this wicked world that, that got all type of filth and foolishness that we, we, we've all been uh, raised up in our mind. So we got to learn. We got to learn how we're supposed to be as it relates to keeping these commandments and dealing with our people. Give Romans chapter 12 and verse 9. Romans chapter 12 and verse 9. Let love be without dis dissimulation. So it says let love or let charity be without dissimulation, meaning don't be phony. That's the, this is traits of at that kind spirit. You're not phony. You're sincere. You sincerely help a brother or sister. So brother or sister fall on hard times, you're willing to help them get on their feet without seeking something in return. Oh, you know what? I'm going to help them because when they get on their feet, they're going to be able to help me. That's not your thought process. Your thought process is, hey, I'm going to help them whether they, can help, whether, whether they can pay me back or not. I'm going to still help them. I ain't worried about, hey, I'm going to give. I'm going to give without the thought of them giving. Even if they say, hey, let me borrow. Hey, can, hey, can I borrow $20 so I can take care of X, Y, Z? A kind person is going to be like, hey, here, take the $20. And then they mind, hey, I ain't even worried about them giving it back to me. If they give it back to me, all praises. If not, all praises. That's a kind spirit. You sincere. Your, your mind is set on, hey, I just want to be a help. Um, read on. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Uh huh. Be kindly affectionate one, one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another a kind spirit is gonna per, it, it, a kind spirited brother or sister prefers their brother prefers their sister they don't only think of they don't only think about themselves somebody that's kind hearted they got that that um that's the like the definition said that's fr truly friendly and deliberately doing good to others they're not that's not gonna be a person that uh let's say we you know we got we got the chats that we have for the body it's not the, a kind person is, they're going to put their salutes, they, they shaloms in the group. They're going to put information out there. But when they put the information out there, a kind person is going to put the information out there, whether they post scriptures or whatever they post. And they're not going to expect, uh, they're not going to have a state of mind where, oh, ain't nobody respond to my messages. Why, they ain't, why ain't nobody responding to my messages? I posted this two days ago and nobody responded. You're not kind. You're, you're posting it because you're looking for attention. That's not kind. You're not doing it if, you, if you're posting scriptures, whatever it is. You're not posting it to benefit the other brother or sister. You're posting it so you can get some type of accolades for you posting it. So that shows that your mind ain't right. And, it, and it's okay. We, that's what we're here for. We're here to get our minds right. That's why we have 
classes like this, the classes that leadership is bringing out. We have classes like this, and we have the scripture so that we can study, examine ourselves, and fix those wrong thoughts. Because if you post, even if you're on Facebook, a lot of people, a lot of our brothers on Facebook, where nobody in the, I post it, I post, I post some on Facebook every day, but nobody in the body, nobody responds to it. Okay, if your purpose, if you if you're being kind and your purpose is to edify, who cares if somebody responds to it? You you just you put it out there, and it is what it is. Whether somebody responds or don't respond, a kind spirit is going to do it no matter what type of return they get. Um, did you finish 10? Yes, sir. Now go to Sirach chapter 29 and verse 8. <clears throat> Sirach chapter 29 and verse 8. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 29 and verse 8. Yet have thou patience with a man in poor estate, and delay not to show him mercy. So it says have, have patience with a man that's a, a, of a low estate. So somebody that, this is a brother or sister that fell on hard times. They was good at one point, but then they fell on hard times where they actually need help. The scripture said, be patient with these, with these people, with these uh, brothers and sisters. Read. Verse 9. Help the poor. It for, says what? Help the poor. For what? For the commandment's sake. It says, help the poor for the commandment's sake. So you helping the poor of your people because you love the most high and you love your people. Whether they're able to give it back to you or you get something back from it, you're not worried about that. You're helping them for the commandment's sake. You in a position to help, you help. That's what a kind, that's how a kind spirit moves. You're not helping because you're getting something back in return. Read, like a lot of like a, when you look at the the, the 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 people that are rich in this world, a lot of times they give into charities and things like that. They're not giving to charities to really help the people, help the community. They give them to charity so they can have a tax write-off. So they can lower their tax bracket. So they can so they can be appear to look good on the on the surface. That's not a kind spirit. Read. Help the poor for the commandment's sake. Uh-huh. And turn him not away because of his poverty. Uh-huh. Lose thy money for thy brother and thy friend. A kind hearted brother or sister, they're gonna lose their money for their brother and friend. Meaning that they brother fall on hard times and they on good times, on good turns, and they brother need help, they're going to help them out. And it's not going to be a, hey, you better pay. I, I just gave, I gave you 200 You better have it back to me in a month. If you don't have it back to me in a month, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm add usury or interest to it, and you're going to owe me 300 And I'm going to come in your house and get it from you. You're you, you going to give me my money. That's not a kind of spirit. That's not how we spoke. You hawk, hawking a month pass. You calling them every day. Hey, you got my money yet? Hey, you got my money? No, that's not a kind of spirit. It says, a kind of spirit going to roll like this. It says, lose thy money for thy brother and thy friend. Read. And let it not rust under a stone to be lost. And it's not saying that we don't have, you don't have savings and things like that. That's how you prepare. We prepare having a saving. But if you have a savings and you have much, you can't be, you can't be so tight that you're not willing to lose your money for your brother because your brother fall on hard times. Your brother has need. Your brother has a lack. And you're able to fill it, but no, nah, because you got your eyes set on that 2019 Benz that you want, no, nah, I'm saving for this. I can't, I can't pull from that. That's not a kind spirit. That's not the spirit that we're supposed to roll in. Uh, from there, go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 41. Acts chapter 2 and verse 41. So as we, as we grow in this truth, these are the qualities that we have to uh, ex excel to, to, excel to be. These are the qualities of, if you're walking in the commandments, these are the, these, these are the uh, attributes of somebody that's growing in the spirit. Somebody that's actually killing off the old man that's... Um, it's all about me, 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 me. And you're thinking about, you know, it's, I'm about my nation. Hey, I'm getting my stuff together. I'm going to this trade school. I'm starting my own business. I'm doing this. Okay, of course, I know I got to take care of myself. I got to take care of my things primarily, but I'm not just thinking about me. I'm saying I'm putting myself in a position where I can take care of my stuff, and then if my, if, if my nation need me, I'm able to take care of my nation just in the same breath. Uh, read. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Then 
They that gladly received the word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. So they spent a lot of time around each other. They was constantly in the scriptures. They was constantly fellowship and breaking bread from house to house. Read. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together. So this is, this is the, the point. I want to read all of it to get the full thought. But this is going into more sort of point. This is us. This is the nation having that kindness amongst one another. Read, read it again from the top. Start at verse 44. Verse 44. And all that believed were together and had all things common. It says all that believed. It says all that believed were together and they had all things in common. Meaning nobody, they wasn't walking around like this is my house and psh, ain't nobody coming to here. This is my house. This is what I, I worked hard for. They had all things in common, meaning they they did they were um they were willing to if they had to open their doors to a brother or sister, they opened their doors. If they had to help a brother out that fell on hard times financially or whatever the case may be, they were there. That's why that's what it means when they say they had all things in common. Read. Verse 45. And sold their possessions and goods. Imparted them to all men as every man had need. So they didn't, they wasn't um, married to their possessions to where they wouldn't, they, they couldn't, they, re they, they relinquished their possessions so that they can help, the help build the nation. That's what a, a, a kind spirit will be able to do that. That's a charitable spirit. That's a hospitable spirit. That's the spirit that's kind. This is a, bro a brother or sister that, that, that will. The, if the, whatever excess they have, they'll sell it off. They're not attached to it. They'll sell it so that they can help their people. Read. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. So it said they did it with gladness and singleness of heart, meaning that they had, they had one focus. Hey, I'm concerned about my people and building this nation. They didn't do what they was doing because they had an ulterior motive. They was doing it because they did it willingly and they was glad to do it. They was happy that, hey, I got a chance to repent. I got an opportunity to get myself right. Hey, I'm going to get myself right. And whoever else is trying to get themselves right, hey, we're going to build together. That's a kind spirit. That's how we're supposed to be. That's how we are supposed to be uh, uh, aspiring to be. Uh, read. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And if we have, if we have that spirit, there's not going to be any divisions amongst us. And when there's no divisions amongst us, the, the body going to grow. Those that are without, those the elect going to come in. The most high going to bring them in because you be rolling in the right spirit. Uh, go back to 1 Corinthians 13. Hey, y'all, so you mind if I add some? Go ahead. So pretty much what you're saying is, or what the Bible is saying is, is that charity is... Not so much the very act of giving, but it's a mindset behind it. There's a spirit behind it. Because you can give, like when Paul says, although I bestow all my goods to the poor, or I allow my body to be burned, but if I have not charity, I am nothing. Because men can do that with an ulterior motive. You can do that in order to seek gain, or you're trying to seek favor. So there's a mindset behind actually doing what you're doing. If I may, I wanted to go uh, go back to Sirach chapter 29 and start at verse 4. Because I know you started at verse 8, but I want to I uh, bring out the mindset that God is trying to teach us in having charity or being kind. Uh, you'll read that, Sirach 29 and 4. I'm going to get quick. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 29 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Many, when a thing was lent them, reckoned it to be found. Uh-huh. And put them to be and put them to trouble that helped them. So there are times like the officer gave, he gave an example where maybe you helped somebody out and you lent them some money or whatever the case may be, and it became that time for you to seek payment for for from what you uh lent to that borrower, right? Read. Verse five, till he hath received. But that person troubles them. They troubles all oh, I ain't really got it today, or I went through this, or uh, something happened or I did have it, then I lost it. They always put them through trouble and it always be pr 
delayed payment, right? It goes something that you should have been able to repay in a week. It turns into two months, three months, right? Go ahead. Read on. Till he hath received, he will kiss a man's hand. Mm -hmm. And for his neighbor's money, he will speak submissively. So everybody is in a good spirit. They always saying the right things in order to receive what they need. Read on. But when he should repay, he will prolong the time. That's what happens. He probably borrowed $50, but it's taking him four months to repay back $50. He got a job now, but he got all these excuses on why he cannot pay you back now or something happened or this happened or whatever the case may be, right? But read on. Come on. And return words of grief and complain of the time. Come on, man. Why you sweat me, bro? Come on, man. You know you I thought we was brothers, bro. Come on, have some charity, brother. He's sweating. you giving you words of grief, right? But read on. If he prevail, he shall hardly receive the half. So eventually he may uh, kind of get away with it, and you'll be lucky even if you get the half. Read on. And he will count as if he had found it. Uh -huh. If not, he hath deprived him of his money, and he hath gotten him an enemy without cause. Read on. He paid him with cursings and railings, mm -hmm. and for honor he will pay him disgrace. But watch this. Read verse 7 with it. Read. Many, therefore, have refused to lend for other men's ill. Ill I mean, dealing. Ill dealing. Fearing to be defrauded. So most people, knowing that people do this, they kind of abstain from uh, lending out money or helping people, right? Or somebody, and they, in your mind, you're just being smart with your money, right? But watch this. Read this. Verse 8. Yet, have thou patience? So what God is teaching us, even though you have that ability or the probability of you still going through that, there may be a chance that this will happen to you. Yet, read that from the top again, verse 8. Verse 8. Yet, have thou patience with a man in poor estate. The Lord still wants you to be patient. He still wants you to help that brother, even though that may happen to you. Still be patient. And, read, and what else? And delay not to show him mercy. Show that brother mercy. Don't trip. Be long-suffering with that brother. Still help that brother. That's a mindset. That's a mindset because you truly wanted to be kind and you wanted to help them out of sincerity, not because you were looking for gain or whatever the case is, right? There was no ulterior motive behind it, all right? That was all I wanted to bring up. Right. Uh, <clears throat> and with that, to get uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6, just to add to that point, um, because a lot of times, like, like we read in 1 Corinthians 13, in uh, verse 1, where it says, you can give all your gifts to feed the poor, but you don't have charity. That's somebody that gives grudgingly. Read that real quick. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. It says, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. Meaning you, you tight. You got it to give, but you like, no, nah, I'm only gonna get five dollars. You, 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 your mind is still seared with Christianity. You thinking in your mind, I don't, I don't want to give this much because they probably ain't doing right with it. You so sparingly read verse seven. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart. So we supposed to give as we purpose in our heart. Read. So let him give. Uh huh. Not grudgingly. Not grudgingly. That grudgingly is going into that being a nigger. A niggard with a, with a D. Grudgingly. You're giving grudgingly meaning you're giving with envy. You're giving them, you're giving, but then you're sitting in the back watching like, man, they probably mismanaging the money. They probably doing this. Da, 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 da. You, you're thinking evil behind the arms that you're giving. You might as well just keep it. It says, get, he not grudgingly, read. Or of necessity. Or of necessity, meaning you feel like you're being pressured to give. So that's the only reason you're giving. So your your mind is really not in your mind is really not in giving. You're not being you're not willingly giving. You're you're giving because you feel like you're being forced to give. Read. For God loveth a cheerful giver. That's somebody that's kind. You're giving and you're like, hey, I love the most high and I love my people. Hey, I'm gonna pay, I'm gonna give these alms, I'm gonna give whatever, whatever it is that you supporting or giving funds to to further this truth. You give it willingly, as you according as you have need. If you got a little, you only give. If you only, 
if you only bring in a certain amount and you can only afford to give five dollars you give that five dollars with cheer you give it cheerfully you don't give it like man i ain't really got much but i'm gonna get this five dollars huh it ain't that much that's grudge that's giving you giving grudgingly it says god loves a cheerful giver so if you're only able to give a little give that little cheerfully give that little faithfully because the most high gonna see it and the most high gonna reward you for it but if you're giving grudgingly you complaining you're murmuring all of that the most high ain't with that the most high, the most high ain't trying to hear that you just, charity is kind go back to first corinthians 13 and four. First corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 charity suffereth long and is kind charity envieth not so charity suffereth long charity got patience charity is kind charity doesn't do things to get something in return now it says charity envieth not pull up that definition of envy this is from the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Wait, I ain't got that one. But read this one, too. I think it's another one on there, too, right? Uh, envy. Okay. Read that one. Envy. Late 13th century. From old French. Envy. Envy. Jealousy. Rivalry. From Latin, envidia. Envy. Jealousy. Source also of Spanish, envidia. Portuguese, enveja. From invidious, envious, having hatred or ill will. From invidere, to envy, hate. Earlier, look at with malice. Cast an evil eye upon, from in, upon. From so, pi so we look at this definition. I know the, the next definition, it say, I'm, I'm only, we're only going to read a couple of the words, but it says envy, jealousy, rivalry, uh, to envy or hate. To look at with malice, cast an evil eye upon, meaning your a brother or sister got something that you ain't got, and instead of you rejoicing in it, you're looking at it with evil. You're looking at it with evil intent. You're turning their good into an evil thing because you don't have it, because it ain't you, or it ain't you that's getting a, a, a promotion, or you ain't getting a, 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 some type of praise. So you now you envious, and you envious in a way that you you don't want them to have it. You wish you... you you think it should be you. So you have hatred. It develops into a hatred towards that brother or sister. Uh, now go to the pull up the next definition. This, this, this is the Webster 8220. The other one, that other one that we just pulled up was from uh, the Edom Online. But this, this definition is from the Webster's 1828. We're going to read. Under the verb, we're going to read number one, and then we're going to jump down to the noun. Envy, verb, one, to feel uneasiness, mortification, or discontent at the sight of superior excellence, reputation, or happiness enjoyed by another. So that's, that's, that's a, you know, a brother or sister has a certain gift, and they just able to do something easily. And it and it bring them the honor, they get honored for it, and you get another. But look at them. You think you think he look at look. He think he the he think he the stuff. He think he got it all. He think he's smarter than everybody. No, he don't. He just doing what the most. He just doing what the most high blessed him to be able to do. He just he just utilizing his talent. But a brother or sister that man ain't right. Look at it like look. He just doing that so he could be seen. Uh, he just doing that so he can get this rank, or he can doing this because so he can do this. He he, he doing it because you turn. His good into something evil, and now in your mind you have you develop a hatred towards a brother that don't even know that you have a hatred for him, and so every time you see him, hey Shalom, oh, Shalom, you know, a phony salute, a phony Shalom, because you got hatred for him, you you envy him, you wish you was him. Uh, read on. To repine at another's prosperity, to fret or grieve oneself at the real or supposed superiority of another, and to hate him on that account. And that, that's what it said. To, to fret or grieve oneself at the real or supposed superiority of another. In your mind, I mean, I could do that better than him. I, I, he get that. I could do it better. And now you got a disdain for him. You don't, you don't show no respect to him. You just move ill. Now read the, the noun. Now, pain, uneasiness, 
mortification or discontent, I mean, discontent excited by the sight of another's superiority or success, accompanied with some degree of hatred or malignity, and often or usually with a desire or an effort to depreciate the person, and with pleasure in seeing him depressed. So that, that's going into you would do anything, a person, a brother or sister, because of their works, they get promoted, they get honored, whatever, whatever it may be. But you, you would do anything. Where, where is it at? What is just, what you just read? Where is it at? Uh, yeah, it says, I'm just going to, it says, pain, uneasiness, mortification, or discontent, excited by the sight of another superiority or success, accompanied with some degree of hatred or malignity, and often or usually with the desire or an effort to depreciate the person, meaning you would you would do something to cause that person to fall just because you don't like them in the position that they're in, just because you don't like that they're being honored or they're being praised or they're being uh, lifted up so-called above you. That's an evil spirit, and that's not charity. Char the scriptures say charity envieth not. Uh, go to from there. Go to uh, let me see is that. Let's finish that definition. We ain't finished it, did we? I'm moving too fast. Envy springs from pride, ambition, or love. Mortified that another has obtained what one has a strong desire to possess. So with that, so go to 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 5. 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 5. And in the title of the class, it says it's a fine line between love and hate. A lot of times when we experience things, sometimes we experience things because the Most High is proving our spirit. Because we might, we may battle certain things. You might battle an envious spirit. You might battle an a, 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 a impatient spirit. And the Most High will put you in situations that will cause you to be impatient. Or he'll put you in situations that would cause that envy to rise up. And that thin line is... Because you've been studying, you've been examining yourself, and the thin line is, okay, am I going to apply the commandments and, and praise this brother, this brother or sister because they're being raised up or they're being honored? Or am I going to yield to my, to my uh, carnal nature and hate on them and think evil of them, murmur about them? And it's a fine line between applying the commandments because when, you, when things happen, Depending on whatever spirit you battle with, the thoughts are going to come. The thoughts going to come. But the thing is, what are you going to act on? Are you going to apply the commandments or are you going to apply your carnal your, your, You're going to walk in, like the scripture say, and I think it's Galatians, walk in the spirit and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's always a battle that's going on in our mind. Whatever it may be, if you got a lustful spirit. You see the big booty woman walk, walk down the street. The thought in your mind is going to be like, hey, man, let me look back. But if you're studying and you're meditating and you're examining yourself, your mind going to be like, no. Nah. The scriptures say that I should not commit adultery. If, you, if, any man, if, you, if I look at a woman to lust out of her, I done committed adultery already. You know what? I'm going to keep it moving. I'm going to keep moving straight. I'm going to keep walking. I ain't going to look back. I ain't going to do that double take. Uh, read, read what you got. First Samuel chapter 18 and verse 5. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war and he accepted in the sight and he was accepted in the sight of all the people. Uh -huh. So we see King David just being King David. He just doing what he told, walking in the spirit. Just he, he joyful. He, he, he's. Doing what's required of him. Read. And also in the sight of Saul's servants. Uh -huh. And it came to pass as they came. When David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the woman came out of all cities of Israel so singing. This is, so this is after David slew uh, Goliath. And read on. Singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands. So Saul has slain his thousands, read. And David his ten thousands. So we see here that David is ascribed for slaying more than Saul. Let's see what spirit, because this is a, this that moment of this that moment of uh, truth, that fine line. 
so now a brother or sister in this position, you got a you got a choice to either be like, man, all praises. He they they ascribe to him that he killed thousands. Hey, they ascribe me a thousand. That's good. And, but he got ten thousand. That's better. But hey, all praises. The most I put a spirit on him to be able to do it. That's that's what your reaction is supposed to be if you have charity. Read verse eight. And Saul was very wroth. But it says Saul was wroth. He was discontented. He was uh, what's the other words that said? He was discontented. He he was uneasy by what was what was happening. It was, read on. And the saying displeased him. He was envious. He had hey now he had hatred toward David, and David wasn't doing nothing. But he just doing he just did what the Most High called him to do. He's just being him. And now Saul got hatred towards David because something that's out of David. David didn't. David didn't go say, "Hey, hey, oh God, I want you to gather all the women of the city, all the women, gather all the women up, and had them sing these songs to vex Saul." That's how Saul responded. That's and that's how a person that got an envious spirit. They think everybody is out to get them. They think everything that somebody do. Is to make them feel feel bad or to bring them down. Every time somebody say something, see, you always got something to say to me. See, why you don't never why you don't never say what I do good? That's a that's an evil spirit. That's not charity. Your your thought process is supposed to be somebody come and say something. Hey, my hey, my brother love me. My brother love me. He he see I'm doing something wrong. He see I'm he see I could be moving better, and he he's nudging me to move better. That's love. That's what charity does. But read on. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands. And to me, they have ascribed but thousands. So he's, he's jealous. This is envy. Saul like, what? Like, man, I'm the king. This little boy, this little boy, and they ascribing to him ten thousand. Only in me, they only give me a thousand. I'd have been in this. I'd have been in many wars. I can't believe this. Read. And what? Can he have more but the kingdom? So now he, he got he doing all this in his thought pro, in his mind when that's not the thought. That's not the thought. That's not the first thought that should pop in his mind. That now he's no, nah, now he's gonna try to take my throne. Read. And Saul eyed David from that day forward and forward. So that he said, Saul eyed David from that day forward. That's that what we read in the definition. It says, uh it says usually with the desire. Or an effort to depreciate the person. That's what we're reading right here. That's envy. That's Saul. Now he now he he want to get rid of David. He like okay, they gave him all this. They gonna give him the kingdom next. You know what? I gotta get rid of him. I gotta move him out the way. I gotta defame him. I gotta make him look bad. That's an evil spirit. That's not charity. That's not a spirit of love. That's not a spirit that's in these commandments. That's a spirit that's just putting on a border and blue fringes. A sister putting on a dress, a brother growing his beard, and they just going through the motions. They not really dealing with their spirit. Uh, go to First First Corinthians twelve and twenty six, because this is what Paul, what Saul should have done. This is the thought process that Saul should have been in, and this is the process. This is a thought process of charity, envy, if not Romans chapter twelve and verse twenty six. I mean, not Romans. I'm sorry. First Corinthians twelve and twenty six. First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse twenty six. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Uh huh. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. If your brother is honored, you, you hey, you rejoice with him. Hey, all praises. He got honored. He hey, he been putting in a major work. He deserve it. Not oh, I can't believe man. He was just doing it. He was just doing it so he could be seen. Like he wasn't doing it sincerely. They can't see that. He was just doing it so he he was he was staying late. On the Sabbath, cleaning up just so they could, so just so leadership can see him and promote him. That's all he was doing it for. That's an evil spirit. That's envy. That and you know what that shows? That means you wasn't doing nothing but sitting on your ass because you was able for you to be able to see all that this brother doing. That means your hand wasn't to the plow. You was sitting back, kicked back, watching, looking for evil. When you yourself should, that's, that's what the scriptures say when it said uh, he gave the one talent to the person and he just sat on it. He hid it he, when he hid it in the dirt. That's what you was doing because if you was busy, you wouldn't have seen the brother doing all this work because you would have been busy. You would have been busy doing something yourself. 
but because you got the hatred spirit, that envious spirit, you're watching for, you're looking for evil. And that's not the spirit that we're supposed to roll in. Go to uh, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. And then this is also, this is a flip side to that too. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. This is the spirit that we're supposed to have. And this, this applies to everything. If you got somebody, maybe you might have, you might be in a case, you brothers, you might be in a case where you might have been, you might be in, you might have been around for three, four years. And you may, you may be, you may be a lower rank. You may be a soldier. You may be a 10, whatever the case may be. And then you might ha have somebody come in behind you that they just got a, a mighty spirit on them. And they move, they come in a door moving like a captain. And they, they excel the ranks past you. Your thought process should be, A, all praises to the most high. He, he had the spirit on them. Your thought process, hey, man, they holding me back. Why they? Why he? How he? How he? He only been here for two years. How he get to this? Da, 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 da. You you murmuring. When the case, it should that shouldn't be the case. Your your thought process should be, man. You know what? Let me see what I need to tighten up on. What I need to fix. What I need to fix in my spirit. Why is the Most High holding me back? What what is it that I'm not fixing? What is it that I'm not seeing? Your first thought process should be to examine yourself, not point the finger at somebody else on them doing something to you or whatever the case may be. That's not a charitable spirit. Read that. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. So this is a humble spirit. This this ain't no envy here. And we, yeah, we, we you could say, oh, this, that's Christ though. No, it's the same thing because if you, do it, if you do it to one of us, you'll do it to Christ when he come on the scene. So John the Baptist said, hey, I came with the baptism of water unto repentance. Hey, I'm a lesser value. That's, he, he humble, like, hey, I know what I came to do. I did what I did. I prepared the way. I see he here. Hey, I'm falling back in the shadows. I, I'm going to let him do him. And, hey, I serve my purpose. He says, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. That takes a lot to say. To be able to be like, to be able to fall back and be like, hey, he mightier than me. He mightier than me. Hey, the most high got a different spirit on him. He move a, he move a certain, hey, that's, a, that's, that's one of the prophets back in the earth. Hey, I'm going to, hey, hey, let him move. Let him do what the most high called him to do. Hey, all praises. Read. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So this is, this is an example of. Um, somebody excelling or doing greater than you, and you you don't get envious, you don't hate, you don't get malicious with it. You just, hey, you rejoice. You rejoice in the fact that, hey, the most high put a spirit on this brother, the most high put a spirit on this sister. Hey, if they get put in advanced above me, hey, I'm going to follow because they got a mighty spirit. They might be Abraham. They might, this might be Sarah. This might be Susanna. We got to have that thought process that, hey, if we all build and get our minds right, it don't matter who do it. As long as we getting our minds right and somebody is doing and putting their hand to the plow, they may have more gifts and talents than you. You're supposed to rejoice in it. You're like all praises that the Most High put a spirit on them and be able to do these things. You know what? Let me cleave to them and, and learn some of them gifts they got. Let me learn how they move. Let me go, hey, how you... How you do this? How you do that? What's your thought process when you do that so that you can do the same and you can excel just like them? Uh, go back to 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. So now we're dealing with charity vaunteth not. Charity don't walk, charity don't walk around um, what's the word? Praising themselves, talking about all. Man, I did this. I did that. This, that. And I, hey, I got this. Pull up that definition. Charity vaunteth not. Read that. Outline of biblical usage to boast oneself. Read the uh, second one. Yeah. A self display employing rhetorical embellishments. And extolling oneself excessively. That's what the Bible calls you're high minded. You're proud. You think more highly of yourself than you ought to. And so you walk around with your chest out 
and it's not a chest out like you uh you walk around arrogantly because there ain't nothing wrong with walking around with your chest chest out but if you're walking around with your chest out thinking that you're above everybody you're ju- above the rest of your brother and sister that's not the right spirit that's not the right man you're walking around like your you like your uh like your ish don't stink Go to uh, Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 2. So it's, we read in the definition, it says to boast oneself. If you boast yourself, you, you're highlighting your, you, you just, you put all of your, you put all of your, um, your accomplishments on display. You put all the things that you was able to do, that, that you accomplished, that you did, you put it on display so that you could be seen, so that you could be seen as superior to anybody else. But that's not the right spirit. Read that. Proverbs, Proverbs. 27 and 2. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 2. Let another man praise thee. Say what? Let another man praise thee. It says, let another man praise you. So the works that you do, you let another man praise you. Not your own, not yourself, read. And not thine own mouth. You got to let let your works, yo, with you, you got to let your works speak for themselves. And you got to let others praise you. Anything else, you're walking in a prideful spirit. You're walking, you're, you're boasting yourself and making it seem like you did something to get what you got or to get the spirit that you have. You got to keep yourself humble and understand that the most, just like you got them gifts, the most I can snuff them away from you and take them away from you. And you won't, you'll be the exact opposite of what you, what you may have or what you may have accomplished. He'll bring you down low because you didn't acknowledge him and show the A. Hey, the most I gave me these hey, all praise. I don't deserve none of this stuff. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. 